Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. I don't want to sing it. Sing it. Hey, everybody, how are you? It's me, it's Alex, it's the Ramble. It goes till midnight tonight. Uh, two full hours of me trying to stay awake. I got my coffee. I think we maybe can do it. Been a little hard today, been, uh, been uh, napping all day, on and off. I've been dozing off. Uh, here's the reason why. I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden, the weather changes, and I get what apparently is uh, our allergies. Uh, my eyes are tearing. Uh, I cough a little bit. Uh, uh, I have to put this cream in my eyes because they're tearing so much, and and I just, you know, it's miserable. So what I do is I take a, uh, a, a non-drowsy thing called Alaclear or something that I got at Costco. It's non-drowsy allergy relief, okay? I don't think, now tell me if I'm wrong, that there is such a thing as non-drowsy allergy relief. Because every time I take this pill, I get drowsy. Uh, and I can't figure out for the life of me why, but I do. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, I took the pill today because I wanted to just stave off the possibility of getting too much of this allergy, although I still, my eyes, you know, you're, you're going to see me rubbing my eyes. You're going to see me blowing my nose throughout the night, you know. Um, uh, and, and it, it, but nevertheless, it does help. But I don't know how much. Okay. I have this other stuff. What is this? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll show you. This is, uh, you remember Flonase? Hold on a second. Okay. Um, this is something, if, you, I, if, uh, if you're list, just listening to the program, then I guess I, you can't see what I'm holding up. But this is uh, called, uh, uh, it, it's got a name here. Hold on. It, what it's generic for is it's generic for Flonase, and it's called flu, flu, uh, Fluticazone. 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 Anyway, it's the same stuff that's like, you know, it's the generic version of, of uh, whatever, of the, you know, nose spray, the Flonase. And uh, I can't tell whether this works at all. But it makes me feel good that I did it. So I will do it right now. And hope that it helps my allergies. Ta-da! You know. Uh, you, you should look back here. I've got a, a, an absolute cornucopia of medicine behind this screen here. Let's see here. Here's my gabapentin I've been taking. Uh, here's some stuff that Phil sent me. Ear gene for ear lotion for making your ears feel better uh i've got uh, uh oh here we go i've got sugar-free halls right and then behind that i've got coldies and then what else i have tons of other stuff i'm not going to go looking for it now uh that, that that's the and then we have a closet full of stuff i mean just full of stuff uh, and uh, I guess it's the home in which a hypochondriac and a perpetually sick woman live. I, I have no idea. But anyway, I don't know. So it makes me drowsy, the non-drowsy formula. But I need something to help me with the, with the, the tearing eyes and the whatever, the gazorchness that I'm getting. All right? That's a term I learned from my friend uh, Steve Gruber years ago, gazorchness. Um, but no, it just really is a is a is a pain in the you know what. So uh, I I just don't uh, excuse me. I'm having to do things here too at the same time. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out why uh, uh, these things uh, you know uh, wh uh, wh how it works. Uh, and so anyway, so I got drowsy from that. 
Also, I've been taking this pill called gabapentin for my feet. And then that, boy, what a great sleeping pill. I mean, it puts me to sleep every night. I haven't had to take uh, Xanax in a long time. And it's not like, you know, it's not like a, 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 a drowsy pill. It's not uh, addictive in any way. But it puts me to sleep. But then I wake up and I'm tired for the rest of the day. But my feet don't hurt anymore. I don't know. You know, uh, my ex-wife, Ronnie, once uh, had on a pillow, uh, knitted into a pillow, you know, one of these samplers that she did, a quote by Betty Davis that was, getting old ain't for sissies. And I got news for you, it isn't. Anyway, I was starting to think about, you know, being old and what being old is, and uh, uh, because after all, I am... You know, I used to look upon people like me as old farts, and, and now I am what I used to call an old fart. And I started trying to re-examine and take inventory on my life today about whether there are too many things that I've become an old man about. Uh, because I surely don't want to. I would always like to be on the cutting edge. I would always like to feel that I, there's a certain amount of hipness that I embody. Uh, and, um, it, you know, just hoping that I, I, I have that, that ability. But apparently, I think maybe there's part of me that's really old fart, you know, because, I mean, I, I'm, I'm griping about things, you know, these, I'm finding myself saying these kids today, you know, I, I haven't said get off of my lawn yet, but I probably would if I owned a lawn. Yeah, I don't have a lawn, so I can't say, you kids, get off my lawn. And, and, and kids don't hang out in my, uh, in my foyer, so, you know, I, I can't uh, do that one. But I begin to think about, you know, when there are, am I not into the new stuff, you know? And, and, and when I, you know, like I listen to, I'll tell you the oldest guy I know, okay? And he's going to hate me for saying this. Jack Bishop is the oldest guy I know because every time I tune into his program, which is a great show, by the way, and if you haven't heard The Intersection, it comes on right after my show. It's a lot of fun. Jack's a lot of fun. But he talks about nothing but old TV shows and how his favorite show right now was going back and watching old Perry Masons or something like that. And somehow, and I hate to say this if you're listening, Jack, those TV shows sucked by comparison to what we have today. I mean, we have some really good stuff now. You know, you talk about the golden age of TV. What was the golden age of TV? The golden age of TV was, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, I Love Lucy. Have you gone back and watched I Love Lucy lately? I mean, for its time, it was wonderful because there was nothing like it because nobody had taken that much trouble to make a show for this medium of television. But, you know, when you say the golden age of television, was that the, really the golden age? Because, quite frankly, we have way better stuff now. Uh, but... You know, he is, uh, in that respect, he's an old fart. He talked about, oh, and I love gun smoke. You know, gun smoke. Uh, if you're listening, Jack, this is going to really annoy you. Gun smoke, I have never watched an entire episode of gun smoke in my life. Not that I haven't tried, but even when I was a kid and it was a new show, I couldn't watch it. I found it boring. Uh were there old shows I really liked? Uh, if I were to if I were to show you programs that I felt I could show you today, and they would be as funny and as uh, with it as any comedy we see today, uh, I would probably point to your show of shows, which was a show. Now you people don't know what I'm talking about. Most of you out there, but uh, it was imaging, it was Sid Caesar imaging Coca, Carl Reiner, Howard Morris. Uh, it had writers on the show like uh, 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 Mel Brooks and Neil Simon and Danny Simon, his brother, and uh, who else on the show was writing on that show? A lot of people, a lot of very famous people, Larry Gelbart, 
people who later went on to do other stuff and become very well known either in the theater or, or uh, otherwise, uh, Mel Brooks movies and so on. Uh, and it was a, it was just, it was terrific, you know. Uh, and it was, you can get, there's, a, there's a, a film that was put out of all their old kinescopes. And it was called 10 from your show of shows. It was 10 comedy sketches from your show of shows. And there are a couple of them there that today I still watch them after all these years and I start pissing my pants because they are so funny. But it, that's about all. You know, I really can't say that in retrospect, I could say that there was any other great shows at that time. Now, along the way, we've had a few good shows that were highlights because they set the tone for the times. But we come to today, and to begin with, you don't know what to watch first. There is so much stuff between the binge watching on Netflix and uh, uh, the fact that on Hulu you can watch your favorite uh, TV shows from last night without commercials if you want to pay an extra four bucks a month like I do. You know, or you can go over to Amazon where they do, they do some great shows, you know, and HBO and people like that. And when you take the whole totality of it, if there's a problem, there's too much good stuff to watch. There's too much stuff you have to keep up with. Let me tell you about my, my average week now. Uh, I start off on Mondays. Well, thank God Better Call Saul is off now because I don't have to watch Better Call Saul uh, for a while. Uh, but Monday, I got to watch the shows from the night before that I didn't catch, like uh, John Oliver and Last Week Tonight or whatever it's called, John Oliver, Last Week Tonight, something like that. Uh, I love that show. He's terrific. He, he is, I think, the best of the political comedians on the air. Uh, uh, is there anything else on Monday? On oh, Mondays, there's a new show I've been watching called The Resident. Okay, so that's, that's another one thing on my list. Uh, then we go through the week, and I've got all the, all the what I call Greg Berlanti shows. Now, if you don't know who Greg Berlanti is, he's a television producer who probably produces more television shows than any human being alive. He's got, if, there's, uh, if uh, the uh, CW has five nights, six nights a week now with two hours a night, okay, that's 12 hours a week of programming. He's responsible for at least over half of it, okay? He does uh, Arrow. He does Supergirl. He does Riverdale. He does Legends, uh, DC's Legend of Tomorrow. What else does he do? Uh, 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 he does uh, um, um, uh, Flash. Uh, there's one other show. I'm trying to think. One other show there. Then over on a new thing called DC, he's got a new show called Titans, I mean, Berlanti just is very, very prolific and is literally, if there's a DC television show, Berlanti does it, okay? Uh, and, uh, he does, and so I watch all those shows. There's like, you know, at least six hours of programming right there out of the 12 a week on CW that I am somehow locked into watching. All right. You add to that several other programs that are regular on my regular agenda. I'm trying to think of some of them. Uh, and it, it gets to be, you know, thank God. I mean, Star Trek Discovery isn't on right now. I'll be watching that. Uh, but, you know, there, there is a lot of good stuff. Being, oh, yeah. And then I'm watching the, 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 the Deuce over at HBO. And uh, let's see here on, uh, oh yeah, the circus over at Showtime. And the circus is a political show about the political week that has just happened. And uh, excuse me, I have to blow my nose. Uh, the, if you're watching us on video, you can see it. If you aren't watching us on video and listening to us on audio, then uh, there was just silence there because I, was not nice enough to pull down my mic here. Anyway, so um, uh, so I mean, I've just got I got so much stuff I watch. It's ridiculous, you know. Oh yeah, oh Doctor Who is on now again. All right, so that if you haven't seen that, it's really good now. So they got a female Doctor Who, 
and uh, that's a really good show. So I'm I'm just I'm all full up now. I you know uh, and on top of it, there are a few things that I watch with girlfriend. She likes This Is Us, which you know every week we watch This Is Us and we can cry a little. And then you know, and then let's see here. Is there anything else I watch with her? Uh, of a, a, a she's got all these things she likes to watch. She likes to watch Bill Maher. And I'll watch Bill Maher with her. I'm not that fond of Bill Maher, but I watch Bill Maher with her. But anyway, what I'm trying to say here is those people who wax poetic about the golden days, the golden age of television, well, if that was a golden age, this is a platinum age, okay? And there is a lot of good stuff being done. And primarily the reason why there's a lot of good stuff being done is where once you had to go in, if you had a show you wanted to do, and you had to convince one of three networks that you wanted to do it. And then they, we got Fox, so now there was another network, and then there was UPM, which was then uh, uh, replaced by the CW that came into being. And uh, so consequently, we had all these uh, uh, networks. But then, you know, and so if you were going to pitch a show, you at least had a little wider variety of places to go to pitch a show. But then all of a sudden, Netflix came along, and and all the cable channels started producing product. And so now you had this, just this cornucopia of outlets in which to sell your idea. And so it, in a lot of ways, a lot of really elusive ideas are doing well uh, over at FX. FX does great stuff. They did the thing about J. Paul Getty you know, the kid being kidnapped and getting his ear cut off was a great series. Uh, they do Fargo. That's a great series. Um, uh, what's this one I was watching? The, uh, the one about the, the very weird one. Uh, the couple of weird shows they put out, too. They, there was a, a great show about the ghetto uh, called Snowfall about this kid. Uh, it, was, it was done by the guy who did Boys in the Hood, and it's kind of Boys in the Hood 2.5. And it's all about this kid becoming a drug dealer. And it's a, it's a great show. It is just, I sat there watching it going, you know, in, this is the platinum age of television because these people who have this weird idea for a show can find someone who will do it. And usually FX is very good at that, all right? A Legion is the show I was trying to think of. Legion, I don't know how they sold the show. It's a Marvel show, but it's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in your life. In, in the golden age of television, you never would have even seen Legion exist, you know. But to, So if that was the golden age of television, if uh, My Mother the Car was the golden age of television, this is the platinum age of television. Uh, and and it, it's, it, it, there's a lot out there that's really good. There's a lot of crap, but there's a lot of good. I, in fact, most of the crap winds up on the networks. For some reason, they haven't gotten away from procedural dr detective dramas and things like that, you know. And about the only procedural I watch is The Resident because it is so into preaching about what good medicine should be uh, and what bad medicine is and the difference between the patient's well-being and the profit margin of the, of the uh, hospital and, and that's the constant theme of this show. So, you, you know, I think you, you should watch it if you haven't watched it. It's called The Resident. And, and uh, the characters are good and the acting in it is, uh, is very good. And, uh, it, uh, you know, it's a little better than your average procedural. But the, the networks don't do much good stuff, you know. This Is Us is marginally okay, although now it's just become, how can we make people cry this week? And so I, I'm getting a little tired of that. Uh, but uh, I, 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 you know, I still like it. I'll still tolerate it, you know. I'm trying to think, are there any other things we're watching? But anyway, so anybody who tells me, so Jack, don't tell me about the Golden Age of television because Gunsmoke sucked. Gunsmoke was, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was trying to do a John Wayne movie every week with a guy who looked like John Wayne because he used to be John Wayne's double. Uh, but and 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 you know, don't tell me that Perry Mason was terrific because it was terrible. It was terrible. 
I go back and I watch some of this stuff and I can say, gee, I, I wonder why I even watch this crap to begin with. You know, so I, you know, and on top of that, uh, that golden age of television was all white. Yeah, there were no black faces on television. It wasn't until it, uh, the, the first sign of it was Cosby on I Spy with Robert Culp, and he was the second on the show. He wasn't the star. Robert Culp was, and uh, but he was one of the stars too. But he was, you know, always he. They didn't want to say he starred because they didn't want to say a black guy was starring in a TV show. And TV did not reflect the skin color of the rest of the country. Okay, you know, there were blacks then too. And it wasn't until, uh, let's see, Diane, uh, what was her name, the singer? Uh, no, not Leslie Uggams. Who? What was her name? Uh, uh, Diane, oh, I'm trying to remember her last name. She had. She was the first black person ever to have the lead in a TV show. And it was canceled in like two weeks, something like that. So basically, when you talk about the, the golden age of television, the golden age was actually the white age of television. And now you turn on television and uh, you see every stripe, every, every coloration of people, every sexuality of people. Uh, it's almost boring that mo a lot of shows feel every show's got to have at least a gay subplot somewhere in the show, you know. So. But that's better than the fact that we never reflected those things. Uh, but television's in its platinum age now. And I, I, I defy anybody to argue with me about that. Well, Jack would. Jack would go, it's all, it's all, it all sucks. Oh, Preacher, that's another show I watch. Let me see. Do you, do you notice that the shows I watch are really kind of like the comic book shows? They're really good, some of them, you know. And if you don't, if you aren't watching, if you don't watch Preacher when it's on, you're missing a great show. Just a great show. Uh, and, uh, uh I, sometimes I, in the new Doctor Who, they got uh, this, uh, is her name Jodie Whittaker, I think is her name? I think I have the name right. Uh, she is the new Doctor Who. Uh, gee, how could a doctor be a woman? Well, because a doctor is a woman. There has always been nothing but male Doctor Whos, and there's no rule in the regeneration of the doctor because they created this concept of regeneration with the doctors and the reason they did that is way back when they had a doctor and uh, he said well i don't want to do this anymore so they said how are we going to change doctors how do we get a new do guy to play the doctor and they they thought up this idea that well when the doctor dies he doesn't die he regenerates and so they would always have the doctor regenerate, and he regenerated into the next actor that was going to play the part until he was too tired of doing it, or they were tired of him, and then they regenerated him into another person. And so uh, uh, up until recently, I think there had been uh, 12 doctors, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, 12 doctors, and uh, it was time to pick the 13th doctor. And they decided, let's go with a woman. There was either that or a black doctor. Okay, there were some people who were uh, uh, yelling and screaming about, hey, there's some great black actors out there who could do it. But they had, had nothing but guys do it. And now they have a woman doing it. It's brought a whole new feel to the show. And it's, she's really wonderful. And it still has he, it's that, that wonderful flavor of, of the doctor. I, I don't know if you're, you probably don't watch Doctor Who a lot of you. And Doctor Who is about this uh, alien uh, who is called the Doctor, and uh, the reason the show is called Doctor Who is because somebody will say, "Well, who are you?" And he says, "I'm the Doctor," and they say, "Doctor Who." See, that's that's where it comes from, but you never know his name. It, it, the, the 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 character is the Doctor, and he travels around in this uh, police call box called the TARDIS. And the reason it's a police call box, in case most people watching the show don't even know why it's a police call box is way back years ago when they were starting the show they had to build a time machine and they figured well what can we use as a time machine that isn't going to cost us uh, uh, an arm and a leg and uh, uh, he, he said uh, what, what, what let me see here oh Diane Carroll Phil Meyer wrote see I got it on my watch see how modern I am uh, Diane Carroll um, 
That was the singer who had the TV show, was the first black woman ever to have a TV show. The first black person to ever star in a TV show. Anyway, where were we? Oh, uh, so uh, they, 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 they didn't have a large budget over there at the BBC, and they said, well, we have this prop over here, a police call box. And they go, well, let's use that, and they write it into the script because what happens is they say, well, it's a, why is it a police call box? And uh, it was explained in some of the early episodes, well, it, it really was able to change into its environment to, to work with its surroundings and it turned into a police call box and then the mode that made it, the uh, science that made it into the thing in the surrounding area, that kind of like it broke. And so it got stuck as a police call box. So it's always been a police call box, which is, of course, bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. But that's because of dimensional engineering. Uh, and this show has been on for, uh, what, 50 years, something like that? Just has kept going and kept going. I remember when I went to England the first time when I was in my late 20s or something, the whole country would stop on Saturdays because Doctor Who was on. Uh, that and Monty Python the country used to stop for too so uh, this show's been going on forever and in and, and the latest metamorphosis uh, uh, they've chosen a woman to play the role and, and good, for, good by them because that re it really works it really 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 works oh boy well anyway now my stomach's bothering me Ugh. if I have to go to the bathroom you guys are going to have to take over if you're calling let me turn on the phones here. Gee, see, I think I never have anything to talk about, and then I start talking here, and I have no idea. I had no idea when I went on the air today what I was going to talk about, right? And immediately, I have this amazing ability to just babble for, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and, and suddenly go, hey, I've, I've, got to, I've got to go to the phones. So the, uh, the uh, uh, Gabnet uh, Skype lines are open. And uh, you can call. Uh, uh, Brian Ludwig's the first one to call. I thought it would be Phil. Uh, hello, 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 Brian. How are you? Hello. Uh, how are you there? Yeah. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. I'm the only one. You're the only one. Well, here comes Charlene Martinez. So far. Here comes Charlene. God, a lot of people are beating Phil to the punch here. Um, hello, Charlene. How are you this evening? Guess what? I got one of those, um, you know, the thing that Rob has, but I got the XS Max because I like a big phone. You got the X? I, I like it. Thanks for telling me about the facial recognition. Yeah. I hate passwords and it's wonderful, right? The, yeah, the, the facial recognition is terrific. Uh, I don't know. I've seen the large one and I kind of like it, but I don't know if it isn't too big, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'm out here in Jersey, so I can have this big ass phone, and you know. Why did you decide? Like why did you decide to put out that kind of money to the phone, or did you buy it with the monthly payment oh, thing? I had to do that monthly thing. Yeah, well, that, and you know what? I I think it's going to cost at least a thousand for a phone in the future, right? What do you mean? Like that phone you just bought is thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be expensive now. Phones, not five hundred anymore, right? Oh, you remember when like you used to be able to buy them for a couple of hundred? You know. Yeah, if you want bells and whistles and all that. Yeah. Because I love a new phone. <laughs> but now the new way you have to buy it. They don't let you buy it any other ways. It's built into your monthly charge. And what I found yeah. was my monthly charge didn't change from when I had bought the phone for five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have now worked it all in. So it's you know it's it's, it's okay. like a car. Yeah. It's all in the financing. Like, yeah. yeah. And hello to Phil Meyer. Good evening, Phil. Thank you for to see. I got it on my watch when you wrote me. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, watch went ding, and I went to see what it was, and it said Phil Meyer, and I went, oh, he's not going to be able to call tonight. And then, then I was disappointed when I found out that you actually had some information for me. So. <laughs> well, not a problem. Uh, uh, you know, I listened to part of the show last night. I had my photo thing, mm -hmm. and uh, again, uh, I... It was an easy first place win. What, 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 who are these people who are using Kodak brownies that you're competing against? Come on, I could take better pictures than you. <laughs> Have you ever looked at my pictures? Yeah, I've seen a few you send around. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
Uh, they're uh, fine, but I, I happen to be better than you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what, uh, uh, what's that song? Nobody's better than nobody's better than me. Or, you know. Any, <laughs> anyway, yeah, you're very competitive. No, I'm not. I just know I'm better than you are. Well, why don't you submit some? Uh, just email them to me. I'll print them. And I'll enter them, uh, letting them think it's mine since I'm a member, and we'll see how they do. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you the topics. Uh, you know, it's either uh, it's nature, it's creative, it's um, uh, monochrome, uh, color. Uh, they have a, a number of different topics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so each month, uh, for instance, what I submitted yesterday was nature. Uh, I had uh, some pretty good shots of some elephant seals that I'd spent two days uh, down in Cambria, which is in central California, yeah. uh, shooting these elephant seals. Yeah. And, you know, I had a 600 millimeter lens and I, I got some good you know, shots. Don't you feel, though, Phil, that you're kind of acting the bully? How's that? Well, you go to these things and uh, every week you win, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you feel like a bully? Well, uh, yeah, there are some guys there that are in the higher uh, elements than me because, mm -hmm. you know, the first year they put you in basic. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in basic. But there's these guys that are in masters that are phenomenal. I mean, just just uh, and some of these guys, it's a retirement community. Some of these guys. Oh, really? Oh, you you got to beat up on old guys, old people, just just like you. Uh, and. Uh, some of these retired guys, they have so much money that what they do is they spend their life traveling and they hire guides to take them to see where the best <laughs> shots are going to be. They hire, you know, the top photographer in the area and they say, take me to, you know, the places where I'm going to get the best shots. Yeah. You know, and, and these, some of these guys are spending thousands and thousands of dollars. No, that's you know? disgusting. <laughs> yeah. And I I'm up against, you know, like that, that could pay somebody to. Master, Plus, bottom line, senior bottom, citizen, master photographer. Yeah, yes, Brian. What? Bottom line is, Phil, you're following the rules, right, down to a T. That's right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Alex. So who fucking cares otherwise? Well, I still Play think. I still think he comes back and he goes. I won another ten awards last night at this thing. I'm thinking these poor people. They're like getting. Some he's people, like going some in and he's like. Me. He's, I prefer to. I prefer to allow my actions. To he's like pimp, pimp, pimp so there, 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 There's it. one other benefit to this is that after you win, then it goes to another group of uh, that competes against fourteen clubs in Northern California, and uh, so. And I've taken some firsts, some seconds, some fourths and fifths, but it's against 14 other clubs. How have you done there? Just uh, in California? I've taken a, a you know, yeah, in Northern California. Have you uh, won first in those? Uh, yeah, a couple of times, but uh, uh, especially for some of my journalism stuff, but um, if, if and my and some of my sports stuff. But if you if you uh, go to n4c.org. N four N number four C dot org. S E N C or C like C is in cat. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can see most likely uh, what I'm competing against in the Northern California clubs. Okay, uh, so they, they, uh, yeah. they should have the yeah. winners. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are pictures there, I suppose, of like uh, kitties. Uh, and and puppies. Not too many. And no, puppies. no. Some of them are just amazing and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I so I like competing against those guys, but I don't want the easy win. Why don't, at you, my just, own why don't you just go one week and not compete? Just go to be from the camaraderie of being with other photographers. Well, it, I'm in They're charge. Competing. No, because you like beating up on these old men. Yes, uh, absolutely. And women. I don't uh, know you, if women. Jeff. You know, just give me some old guys to plum uh, plumble. Plumble. Are plumble. there's other guys not competing though? Uh, no, most most people compete, but you know See, there, that's, my, that's my point. They are competing, so you know that's that's the name of the game. Also, uh, let me ask you another follow-up question, Alex. Do you think uh, do you still think you're better than him photography-wise? Oh yeah. Then be like Stephen King said this Donald Trump in regards to Elizabeth Warren. Uh, pony up and 
and put your money where your blabber mouth is. Oh, sure. Yeah, okay. send, send me. Don't send be like Trump. Of, of course, uh, I haven't taken a photo. I, I haven't taken what I consider a photo in years. Well, no, I've taken a couple. I'll send you a couple that are taken lately with, uh, oddly enough, with iPhones. But that that's okay. I'll print it on on this uh, printer back there, and I'll submit it. Yeah. And uh, you know, we'll. Uh, uh, you know, L let me maybe see. just to be legitimate, I'll enter you as a, uh, I'll sign you up. You'll, si you'll <laughs> sign member. me up as a member? Yeah, uh, and this way I can uh, uh, submit here. it. But You know, um, I was a photographer. Yeah. In, in the 80s, I had like, a, what was it, 35 millimeter, but it was like, like you pushed a button. It was just a regular tourist camera. Uh -huh. I never knew I was a photographer. I wish I would have realized that. <laughs> I would well, just take pictures of all kinds of people in the 80s that I thought looked, you know, great. And I what, never knew Andy Warhol did stuff like that or anything. You know, I thought I was crazy, but... You still have those photos? I don't know. Some asshole ripped them all up on me. and they would, oh. I could have had a book, I think, if that asshole didn't rip everything up. Ex-boyfriend-wise, you mean? Yeah, some idiot, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, you know... Cash in now. I, I yeah. kept some of my negatives, and there was a point at which sure. I used to print, and if I printed it, I wanted to throw away the negative because I never wanted another yeah. one. I wanted it to be an exclusive print. And I really feel that I made a big mistake because I, I threw away some great stuff. And uh, I found one of my negatives the other day of Jack LaLanne, and oh, he was Jack probably LaLanne. 80. Uh, when I when I took he that shot, probably looked fifty right? or whatever when you. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, and and it's a, it's a black and white, but I'm going to digitize it and print it, mm -hmm. and uh, because it's on uh, film. Oh, and I would it, like to see that one. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, yeah, that that was a very interesting shot, and um, you know he let me take it. And, and yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, what I do now at this club on uh, the Wednesday meeting is I'm in charge of the photos. You know, these guys uh, have different uh, uh, people that do different things. They got a president, they got, uh, uh, you know, the guy who does the projection and, and so forth. So they, um, they uh, con me into being the guy that takes the photo, they organizes got them. Working. Yeah, they, got they organize hard. it on the table <laughs> and put it up on the uh, viewer in front of the judge. And... Uh, then I found out that I had to do a download and download all of this stuff to. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, now I'm committed for a year to uh, to being at these meetings, uh, re regardless of whether I download something or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You, you find any photos, Alex, uh, that you don't have a tree growing out of your uh, uh, subject's I head, I or uh, <laughs> a tree out, of, out of my sub out of a Lane? subject's head. What, what, what yeah, you know how you take a picture of somebody and the, and and the, they're standing in front of a tree, so it looks like it's growing uh, out of their head or a pole or. Here, well, hold on a second. I'm getting some stuff. I'm sending it to you. Okay. Oh wait a minute. Hold on over there. And where's that other one? Ah, here it is. Here's my. Favorite. I've seen photos like that where material or where mistakes like that were noticed and were capitalized on. <laughs> For example. A, yeah. One where a guy, a, a hipster-looking dude, around my age, maybe a little younger, he's in a beach and he's pull, he's acting like he's pulling down his uh, um, his uh, swim trunks. You see a yeah. rainbow come out of his cock area. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. The other one where the guy, uh, you know, I guess uh, they're gay and his boyfriend's taking the taking the picture. He's a dark-haired guy, good-looking good-looking guy again, around my age, maybe younger, maybe a little older, and uh, it's in the desert southwest. And he's leaning back, and it's looked like the uh, cactus is protruding from his crotch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah you... <laughs> Phallic symbols. Yeah, I just sent you some, Phil. All right. Just a few samples. Okay. Well, let me, uh, let me, uh, uh, I'll, I'll look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mail. All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not mail. You don't look at the mail. You look at oh, oh, oh. your Facebook. You sent it to the Facebook. Uh, uh, messenger. Uh, messenger. Okay. Mm hmm. Oh, five photos. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that's interesting. <laughs> you know, the squares. Yeah. Yeah. That's more. That's recent. That's that was uh, taken. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could show everybody the pictures, but in order to get them loaded in here would take forever. So. 
Mm. Um, I want. I bet you took yeah, some interesting good. photos, Alex, of the of the horses where you and your uh, girlfriend went. Yeah. Your wife went. Yeah. That you're one good. time. Uh, what happened to the toes of the woman toking in the uh, closet or whatever? Uh, uh, I don't think there are toes on there. Yeah, yeah I know. They cut them off. Yeah, cut them off. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess, uh, you know. If you look closely, what's in the skirt? Uh, dog. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. <laughs> And Matt, she, so this and, is and uh, she, this is street stuff that you did? No, that was that, that was shot in Ibiza years ago. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> it's a it's but, a it's but a it woman. Was basically, you know, what? street photography, right? What do you mean, basically street photography? There, it's, you were there, walking there, around. There. You 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 were just shooting. Yeah, people. you can hold the photos up so people setup. can see these. Uh, she was a Sufi dancer, and that was uh, she lived in a tower uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the mount uh, on the hill in Ibiza. And uh, in that case, she was down at the house below, and and uh, there's a show that other shot where she's on the rock. Uh, oh, this is a great shot too. Uh, yeah. I like the way you've got the mountain uh, behind her. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I, like shot. I win, Phil. It's not black and white. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let's see what else you got. Of course, those this are the is this is a good looking shot. Yep. Yeah, that's just uh, a simple shot. Yeah. 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 That's really nice, yeah. Yeah. And uh, this one's very artistic. That one, I took it with my iPhone. I did it up at uh, uh, up at uh, uh, in Vermont uh, at the, uh, the the museum they have up there. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, there's a boat. If you look, there's a boat in the window. Reflecting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It isn't just the window. But sh show them if you can. Oh Phil. yeah. Uh, okay. Let me enlarge it. If I can, yeah, yeah, just, uh, yeah. yeah, just. Uh, uh, so when you're looking through the window, there's more. There's more there. There's a. Yeah. There's oh, a see. boat. Yeah. Now, is that the boat that's on land? Yeah. And, yeah. And, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I then I just took the I converted it to black and white because <clears throat> I felt it looked better. Yeah. And, uh, no, it's an interesting yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Well, you go, uh, I'll enter you because I don't want to do it under my name because yeah. I don't think that that's. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> yeah. So you'll be the newest member of the yeah. Rossmore Camera Club. Is that Ross your lovely Moore, wife, Abby Jeff? Jersey, Is that, that your lovely <laughs> wife in back of you? Oh, there uh, she you're is. muted. You're muted. Yeah, yeah you're turn muted. your mic hey, on. Here. Hi, how you doing, kiddo? <laughs> How's it going? Hi, Pam. How you doing? How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I'm going back to pay bills. So let's oh, fun. oh, oh, good. Uh, good. Have fun. That's how I have to see. Yeah. yeah, we're in the camera yeah. club. Oh, uh, happy anniversary! I uh, oh. just been passing around a photo uh, <laughs> of uh, him and you when uh, when he looked young. <laughs> yeah. You looked great. <laughs> you guys were married basically ten years oh, after my answer. parents were. All right. How, 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 how many? Is that on Facebook? Jeff's pictures. Yeah. yeah. How many years have you been married, Jeff? <laughs> this time, 32. How do you like that? Yeah, there's for, 32. 42. 42? Yeah. Well, <laughs> for my parents. For my parents. We're, we're, for we're for going his. on eight, but I can brag it for feels him. like 42. So, you know. Uh, yeah. I think we're going on eight. Are we going on eight? Eight. <laughs> We're going on you know, at least Alex, seven. Alex, what? my mother um, listens to you a little bit. She's eighty-seven. Yeah. So she, I was telling her about you know Ronnie and how, you know, about what happened and all that. Yeah. So she said, "Well, was that his first wife or is the wife now?" Or I said, "Ma, I think you know he's had four wives. Four wives," she said. "Oh my God." <laughs> You know, I, I, the story. The story. Wife. The story I love to tell is that when Ronnie was leaving me, she she railed away at me for two whole days while she was packing. You did this and you did that and you did this and you did that and I just, I just, I, uh, I just uh, couldn't. I was. It was driving me nuts. You know. You get numb. And one of the things she said to me was, "And you know what? You never engraved my, in, in my uh, my wedding ring." <laughs> Well, you never got a headstone for your and, mother, and, either. And I said, I said, well, I just never knew what to write in such a small space. You know, how, a, a sentiment that that would be ap appropriate of our marriage. And I said, it's funny that you should mention it because I finally had come up with what I wanted to engrave in there. And she said, what? I said, number two in a series. 
<laughs> you always had uh, women that could keep up with your sense of humor. <laughs> uh, no, well, she couldn't keep up with that part of my sense of humor. What? This watch that keeps telling me to it. stand up. The only thing I don't do well is stand up. I've met all my other achievements on this watch today. Uh uh, now, I know that a couple of people use the CPAP machine or have them but don't use them. Here we go, I, folks. I, it's Alex's waiting Alex's room. Go waiting right room. ahead. Good, go right I have ahead. A lot of, I have a lot of issues. <clears throat> I, I have decided that uh, the, the sleep that I get with it and the way that I feel when I use it is so superior to not using it. Um, I, I have a program now that my CPAP machine sends a signal and tells uh, rates my sleep so it'll tell me uh, how many hours uh, how many episodes I had where I wasn't breathing uh, yeah. uh, if there was any mask le leakage and uh, <laughs> mask so, leakage. and then it gives me a score oh and how many times I took it off during the night and uh, so I got a 98 last night and uh, I'm very proud of it now now it's a challenge every day to see if I can get a hundred, yeah, oh, <laughs> on on my uh, on my score. Yeah. I won't. I refuse to do that, and I refuse to do that capsule thing they made me swallow, where I had to search I my. Poop. That's wonderful. I had to search Phil. through my poop, and I refused to. I, he, I told the gastroenterologist, "I'm not doing it." What you should go is to a, a weekly CPAP meeting, and then beat all the guys there. Right. Beat yeah. All the you CPAP know. Up. Yeah, I got well, a 98 on my CPAP machine. Oh, yeah, I only did a 98. You know, when I was going to school in Miami, I, 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 you know, I'd hang out at the pool, and there'd be all these old people talking about the size of their scar from their operation and, uh, you know, uh, what doctor they're going to and so forth. And, and I used to think, hey, these guys, what are they talking about? You know, this is this crazy. Yeah. Well, here I am. <laughs> well, you know something? I got to tell you, uh, uh, and I, I'm sure Jeff would agree with this with me. <laughs> when we get together with Marjorie's friends who are in their 70s, what is the basic, Jeff, what's the basic uh, conversation at a table when you get a bunch of 70 year old people in their 70s together? How have you been feeling? <laughs> right, right, and it's one ailment after another. And uh, have I got a good doctor for you? And uh, oh, oh, oy vey is me. You should have seen the bill I got. You know, uh, and, and and so that's what you have to look forward to, kids listening to us out there. But you know, I was talking earlier about the fact that I really don't want to feel like I, I I want. I was taking an inventory today of myself. Am I becoming one of those old people that complains about the younger generation? You know, but you've been doing that since you were 25. I did that when I was 25. Yeah, but no, but do I? You know, like as I said earlier, I said I I would probably tell kids to get off my lawn if I had one. You know, but I don't, so I I'm spared that in that. But well, they're not I, they're not cheap to keep. But like either. for instance, I was talking about Jack. Uh, uh, Jack, uh, uh, whatever Bishop. 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 Yeah. Well, that's his. That's his show. I know him by another name. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, uh, I call him Irv. Uh, but you call him Jack. Anyway, the point is that call you out. That he always <laughs> on his show is forever waxing poetic about old TV shows, and I'm going. Those shows sucked. You know, if you Thank go back, you, Alex, if you if you right. go back and watch a Perry Mason, I'm sorry, it sucked. If you go back and watch a Gunsmoke, big fucking whoop. You know, yeah. the golden well, age of the, the golden age of television was golden for most people because it was white. You know, oh, but yeah, the fact yeah. is yeah. that today I said today new. today is the platinum age of television. I mean, there is so much good stuff being done. That it's with, it, 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 with very little. Jeff is uh, good. Jeff. What, Jeff. What, what, uh, yes, yeah, Jeff. I, I agree that like Gunsmoke was pretty crappy TV, but for a certain way, if you hear the old radio shows, I thought they were great. I don't know why. Well, the, 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 the trouble with television, okay, back in the so-called golden age, was that they still hadn't gotten over radio. 
You know, yeah. everything that came to television had been Plus, radio remember, shows. Yeah. Gunsmoke was a radio show. Perry Mason, I think, had been a radio show at one point. Uh, you know, so we were uh, also watching on 13 inch TVs and well, thought we yeah, had but, uh, I mean, but, conquered the world. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, the uh, and if they yeah. then they then they suddenly realized, well, we're not uh, we're, we really should start doing television. But what they were really doing is what they knew about movies. In other words, they had there was very little defining of the medium, as it were. And and so you go back to some of those shows and they were ghastly. I mean, come on. I love Lucy sucked. You know, I mean, but Johnny Carson was great. No, but Johnny Carson was later on. He was he was yeah. twenty years in, twenty five years in. You know, Alex, okay. I love Lucy, but I can see what you mean, though. They they are old and they are dated and. Well, the comedy was broad and it was stupid, and uh, you know, she she. Well, would we be... had selective memory too. You know, uh, when I think of Danny Thomas, make room for Daddy. Oh God, you know, I, I I remember the oh, name. Uncle Tanoose. And, yeah. yeah, and when I go to bed and my little dog is laying across the bed, I, I'm thinking, make room for daddy, you know? No, Uncle Tanoose. <laughs> yeah, but make room for there. daddy, you know, was a show I watched. There were a lot of those shows I watched because that's all there was. All right? Yeah. But, you know, today... With the with the with the subscription model going and the uh, you know the binging and the, the this thing and that thing, you compare that to, to old television, and it's so superior in its in its quality. If you want to find really good television, you can find it out there now. But some well, of it does stand on its own merits. I mean, I still see uh, Marifa every episode of the original Rod Sterling uh, Twilight Zone on Netflix. That's. I, yeah, yeah, they only problem I ever had with Twilight Zone was it was always uh, uh, it, I mean, it, it always Twilight boiled Zone, down to the same dated. plot line at the end, like uh, oh, you mean to serve man as a book is is a cookbook? Da da! You know, there's always some ending. kind of shocking little ending, and and and, and for its time it was okay, you know. It's the um, formula that's still widely used in today's television. Uh, well, give me an example. A uh, more recent example, this is from the 80s, Tales from the Dark Side episodes, and even more recent yeah. example in the 90s, Tales from yeah. the Crypt. Wait a minute, look, and, who's uh, ca look who's calling me. Hello uh, to our old friend, uh, let me see here, is he there? Are you there, Carter? He tried calling in, but what, I don't... What was, oh, Dark Shadows. No, hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Oh hold God. on a second, I'm trying to get this I guy. That Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me... Oh, okay. And we he didn't come in, so oh there he is, there we go. I think yeah, we're about to see buddy. him. Yeah, yeah. He there, hey oh, okay. Carter, Mal, how are you? Can, oh, you're you, muted, you, Carter. You're muted, Carter. Unmute yourself. Uh, wait a minute, we want him to unmute himself because you got to hear this guy. Skype likes to play around with the. Uh, How do, well, if he's mute, he might be deaf. Too. Tell, tell him where he unmutes <laughs> it. Uh, uh, oh, is he? Uh, is it the Skype? Are you using Skype, right? You yeah, he has settings. It, it, yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it, it, let's see. Yeah, you go up to settings and uh, let me look. Audio uh, and video preferences. Oh, are you on a Mac? Uh, wave yes or no, Carter. Uh, he's no? on Windows. Okay, no. he's not on a Mac. Okay, so, so on Windows, on Windows, Mal, go up to. Oh, he's on eight. Windows 7? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's still, uh, uh, let me see here. Go up your Skype. Of course, he may have the new Skype, in which case I'm not going to be able to help him. Uh, I feel bad. I can't like that. Uh, <laughs> you know huh? how he feels. Anybody there have, uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. Uh, let me see. Uh, Windows machine? Yeah. Well, maybe it's the same. Go up to Skype, go to preferences, then go to audio. Yeah. And, and then uh, unclick the mute. Uh, although he might have a mute button right on the screen. Oh yeah! For the at audio. the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, if you roll your um, uh, cursor over no, it, there'll be no. three circles. No, he says no. No. Okay. Okay, okay he said. Okay, uh, he may have the new Skype. Is what may have happened. Yeah, uh, uh, so, I think I got that on my phone. Let me look. <laughs> they suck in uh, Skype. Yeah. Oh damn it! Uh, let me see here. Uh, I hate when they keep changing. You might be able to right-click on the screen and select uh, the little gear icon, and then. Do you, do you have a little? Do you there. have a little gear icon on your screen anywhere there, Mal? 
You have to right click on anywhere on the uh, screen though right, where we're talking. Right click on the screen. No gear. Oh boy. And you'll see the gear right on. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah, we have to play charades with him now. Well, you could be a mime there, Mal. Uh, let me see here. You called us once before and you had it. Uh, of course, I might have been when Skype was different. Uh, see if you can find some kind of preferences somewhere. I don't know. See, I don't know if that's the new one or the old I, one. I, I would still just imagine that they wouldn't change that dashboard that Oh, yes, much. they do. Oh, they oh, have. Really? It's oh, yeah. completely fucked up. Yeah, the new they like to take a good thing and fuck it all up, as uh, quoted in the movie Casino. Okay, let me add, just... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, it's true. Uh, it's, uh, nod yes or no. When you see all these other people, are they in, some of them in little bubbles up at the top of the screen? Are they in like a little little bubbles on top or, of the screen? Are we in square boxes? Uh, are we in square boxes and you can yes. see square everybody boxes. in the square? Okay. Okay. So okay. he's got the old Skype. He's got the good. old Skype. Okay, so you That's go good. up to tools... Do you see where at the top it says tools and Skype? Uh, there should be a menu bar at the top if you roll your <laughs> cursor up there. Oh, boy, this is great radio. Uh, 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 where it says Sky, where it says tools, does it say tools? Do you see that drop-down menu? It says tools. <laughs> I don't know how much longer we can do this, you know. Uh, do it as long as you need to. You got two hours. Who cares? I got, <laughs> I got the rest of my life to waste. Oh my, uh, my life to waste. Uh, let me see here. Oh God, because I would love to love to talk to him. He's fascinating. Any of this working? What? Is that him? What? Did what? you hear me? Yes, we're yeah. gonna hear you yes, now. Yes, now we do. Well, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> he did it, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Carter Stevens. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, who in the halcyon days, in the good old days, in the golden age of porn, <laughs> ah, okay. was one of its premier directors. Is is my microphone doing it, or is my camera? Am I, do you hear me hit, am, am, hitting my mic? No, no. So it's your camera, but no, that's so fine. It's my camera. That's fine. You, Don't touch anything. I won't. You know. But I can take this stupid thing off. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, folks, can that's you hear that's, us without it. I can't hear you then. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what's so great about this program, folks, that every now and then somebody can't get something working and we spend a half hour just getting them to get it. So to work. In, in the future, Carter, if you go back into which, wherever you were and you choose <laughs> the uh, microphone instead of the in 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 camera or in computer mic. Yeah. Uh, you know, there'll be a drop down list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you actually can choose the one you want. It told me that the uh, my uh, microphone needed an update on its driver. Oh. Uh, mm. but, I've been but told that update. a lot. Yeah, I uh, forget. I've been told that anyway, a how lot. you how you been? Uh, <laughs> how you been, Mal? Um. Well, yesterday was my birthday, and I survived it. How old are you now? Uh, slightly older than dirt. Well, wait a That's minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You may be talking to to a to a a, a dustbin here. Senior. How? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Seventy. I'm 74. You're younger than I am. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh, okay. You <laughs> I rub just like it to in. rub it in. Yeah, Plus, rub it, it takes in. 500. Scientifically speaking, it takes 500 years for the Earth to generate one inch of talk. This oil. guy, this guy, I got to <laughs> tell you, it, it, a lot of guys worked porn back in those days. This was the nicest guy working it. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and you're a liar, but thank you. It, no, I mean, and and th those those were the days when you you tried to make a movie, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We were making movies. We just had to make sex films because they wouldn't let us make any other kind. Yeah, and you had to do them on the cheap, too. You didn't have the budgets. Uh, cheap is uh, an overstatement. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, if, if we had $10, we would have had it. We would have had cheap. Yeah, yeah. We were pra practically making it for free. The, well, I'll tell you what these guys would do. Correct me if I'm wrong. They would go down. Uh, first of all, they would go to the... Uh, camera rental place and they would rent the camera on a friday because if friday you rented night, it on a friday right. you would only pay for one night and be able to keep it all weekend because they didn't open again till monday right well actually no we would we would rent it for monday oh okay but that means we would have to pick it up friday night uh, i see because they were closed on the weekend and so now so you we we picked the equipment up on friday night yeah. Shoot all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and bring the equipment back Tuesday morning. Right, and so and that's we how were in 
in three days, we would shoot a whole feature. Right. Sometimes two features you know, in, in three days. <laughs> and then, uh, so really, this was a weekend business for the oh, most yeah. part. Yeah. And then uh, 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 another cheap thing they used to do was you used to go to the, uh, I don't know, wherever you bought your film from, and you bought what was called Film Ends. Yeah. Explain short, that. Short, short ends. Short ends. Reg regular films yeah. were shot on, on big cameras that used 1,000-foot rolls. <laughs> when they got down to 100, 200 feet, they would change it out so it didn't run out in the middle of a scene because there was so much money invested. So those short ends were later sold for pennies. So we would shoot on 200 On feet. short ends. On short yeah. ends. And it, it we would save hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Now, I, I had a friend that had one of these places, $1 talk to a nude girl. And there was all these booths in there that you, if you put a token or a coin in it, uh, you, you had like a continuous loop movie uh, they were uh, called Loop. We yeah, called loop. them yeah. Loops. They were called yeah, Loops. Were they 8 millimeter? They were or... film. Well, they were shot in 16, but yeah. they were manufactured in 8 millimeter to go out to all the stores. Yeah. So yeah. They, were, they were 8 millimeter stag films. Yeah, so yeah, they, 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 they ha he had all these boots, and uh, there was a chair in there, not that I would sit in it them. Was, it, there were, it, it was. There were many times when mm. I was paid in bags of quarters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For my loops, <laughs> that was our that was our bread and butter. That's what we we shot those in between features. Well, I'm we a could... flooring, I'm a flooring contractor, and I did all the floors for this guy, yes. uh, and uh, and so uh, I did that <laughs> place. And I bet they, they had to rebuild those. What was it? Was it, was it, was it not? Was it <laughs> was it non-stick flooring? Uh, no, Not believe me, it was flooring. sticky flooring. <laughs> but uh, they shot a feature film in his massage parlor called Hardcore uh, with George C. Scott. Yeah. And, I, shot, uh, I shot footage for Hardcore. As a oh, really? Of fact. Well, maybe you knew yeah. Duke Skinner. No. Uh, he owned no. Uh, no. Tiffany's Massage Parlor on Broadway in San Francisco. No, I was the New York boy. Oh. Yeah. I was I, the only, I did one feature, uh, Tinseltown, out in L.A. I was out in L.A. for a year. Otherwise, yeah. I was strictly New York. Uh, yeah, well, I introduced Alex to Duke. We had dinner with him one night. Yeah, well, forget about Duke. Nobody knows who the fuck he is. Well, Al yeah. Alex ran the hell out of, of New York uh, with his tail between his legs and hid out somewhere in the West Coast for a couple <laughs> years till the heat died down and came back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad, Mal. <laughs> Come on. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised you ever came back. You were a star in no, San Francisco. Well, no, he, wait, I'll tell you what happened. Um, uh, by, by the way, there are a lot of people not listening tonight. I don't know what this is about. Anyway, uh, I uh, but screw them anyway. Uh, they're missing good stuff here. I um, I did the whole midnight blue. Film, I did the whole midnight blue thing and everything like that. And after a while, that made me. I don't know if it made me unemployable in New York, but I just couldn't get employed in New York. I also because I had a reputation of having been the youth guru and things like that, and and you know time had kind of passed me by, and they were so anyway. I found that with when you in radio, if you left one town where you had a certain reputation, you could go to another town and create a whole new reputation, and that's exactly what I did by going to San Francisco, and I did very well out there, and I ran a show with comedians and things like that, you know. Uh, we, uh, we had even heard of you in New York. Yeah, and then after 20 years or so, or 25 years had passed, and people had gotten sick of me in San Francisco, my friend said, come on back to New York. They probably still remember you here. And when I came back to New York, all of a sudden there were open arms like, Alex Bennett, you're a legend. You know, and I went, Jesus Christ, things certainly have changed for me in this town, you know. And so I got managed to weasel another maybe ten years out of work out of New York City. So you know. And and now you're we can't get off we can't get you off our computers. But now you can't get me off your computers exactly. But are you watching this show, The Deuce, on HBO at all? No, I don't get HBO. They called me. Um, one of the associate producers called me uh, about six months a year before they actually started production and pumped yeah. me for about an hour. On uh, the history, yeah. but um, oh, from what creative I producer, yeah. 
yeah, no, they 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 contacted a lot of people. Yeah, uh, yeah. they actually uh, uh, contacted Annie Sprinkle and paid her <laughs> as a consultant. Really, um, for the dues. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This, so, there's no, a, but I've never I've never seen seen it because I, I don't get uh, HBO. There's a couple I know. I'm trying I to remember. Steal it, so I'm trying to remember their names right now. But they they've been kind of chronicling the history of that period of time, and the yeah. Deuce um, uses them. April and yeah, yes. um, April and oh jeez. Yeah, I I, uh, I know. Uh, April's. But, uh, but I had I had I had, uh, I had di- kill me. I had dinner with them because they yeah. they uh, they wanted to do a, they did a whole thing on Midnight Blue, and uh, they kind of treated me like I was some kind of hero of theirs or something. Yeah, I did. You know? I did one of their first podcasts, and and uh, uh, they still we still stay it's in. It's called the Rialto Report, folks. If you ever want to yes. go, it's very interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah. But what like the, the reason I asked you, uh, well, Rialto Report. Yeah. I think it well, is. The reason I wanted to, uh, I asked you about the deuce was I wanted to see what your take was on how accurate they were, because what happened was it starts out in about 1972 and then it goes to 1977. Well, in 72 I was not doing Midnight Blue yet, but by 77 I was already well into it, and you know, mm-hmm. uh, and and so I could, and I felt they got it pretty good, you know. What was going on? Uh, well, they did, like I say, they did a, do a lot of research. They did contact a lot of us dinosaurs. Yeah. You know, for our, uh, uh, you know, whatever we could feed them. Yeah. Um, what they did with it, I don't know. Yeah. But do, do uh, they still pay royalties for stuff you shot in the 70s? What are you, royalties? Are <laughs> you kidding we me? Were, we were outlaws. <laughs> yeah. And do you know what the, re, uh, the retirement packages for outlaws jail (laughs) if you're lucky no if you're lucky you get arrested and get jail that's retirement that's that's these three meals three meals a day three (laughs) hots and a cot where is this this they treat treat, uh uh prisoners better than they treat old people in retirement homes yeah 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 that i can believe yeah. Where when I get ready, gentleman? I'm going to get arrested. Uh, she's asking you where you're located now. You're down. Yeah, in- I'm in, I'm in uh, the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, out yeah. In the- okay. All right. Yeah. I, I got out of New York. My God, thirty years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I've been living out here ever since. Yeah. Um. But uh, no, I do get some royalties because I got myself an honest distributor forty years too late. <laughs> and, um. He, it's alternative video, and they release a lot of my films on DVD, and uh, they had me do uh, commentary tracks for a lot of them, uh-huh. and they actually pay me royalties, honest royalties, and uh, they did uh, an incredible job restoring a lot of my films, which are, are 40 uh-huh. years old. You know, I don't even have copies of, of, of most of them. Yeah, but they yeah. dug them up and and restored them, and and put a lot of effort into them. Wow, they're available on Amazon. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, what you just like, look? You just look? Like hardcore yeah. porn. There's a, 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 I, I, most of it is. There's one. I have one film called Punk Rock, which is for sale on Amazon, uh, on the R-rated version. Um, that's the only R-rated film uh, of Carter Stevens that ever. I worked on a lot of them. But I never produced any of them, or I, I never had a credit. Just, just Carter's. for just for grins, Carter, uh, name some of the titles of your oh films. Oh my God! Uh, Roller Babies, Teenage Twins, uh, Honeymoon Haven, The uh, Collegiates, In Sarah's Eyes, Hot Oven, Mount of Venus, um, Tinseltown. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, now, let me. My mind went blank. Let me ask you a question. Another two hours. Let me ask you all of all of Alex's favorites. Oh, no, let me, <laughs> I know all these films because I, I, I knew them at the time. I, in fact, yeah. I have some of them on my uh, my computer here uh, because uh, yeah, unfortunately they're on a lot of computers because they're on a lot you, of well, these. Uh, some uh, some women I, some women I yeah. knew were in those films, uh, but yeah. you, <laughs> you and I both. Your stuff, but I, I won't. I won't. Get into those details, Alex. 
for your own sake. Well, you know, I you know, it's interesting. There, there's a woman by the name of um, of um, uh, uh, Kristen Bell. Is it? She's a uh, she's an actress, and she was the voice of uh, of uh, the princess, not the not the not the ice princess, but the uh, the little the the sister princess in uh, Frozen. And Kristen Bell uh, was griping about the fact that she finds that some of the Disney uh, characters have to be explained to her daughter. Uh, and the one that she brought up that I thought was so telling was she said, I don't know what to tell her when it comes to Snow White because at the end, Snow White gets an unwanted kiss. And Me some too. of the, you know, she was <laughs> she was passed out, so he was taking advantage of her. Mm-hmm. We the have prince, to admit yeah. that. Well, in Palo Alto, will get three months. Isn't that what they gave that kid? But, that, uh, but, but how how do your films hold up, Carter, under the light of uh, say Me Too or or today's uh, revised morality? Oh, very well. Um, my my films- releases. My, my films were, oh, yeah, well, number one, yes. <laughs> um, they were all voluntary. Uh, and I, I had to pay the bitches. Um, <laughs> no, seriously, um, 90% of my films were comedies. Because yeah. I think fun, uh, sex should be fun. And my films did represent that. So uh, there, was, um, there wasn't any rape. There wasn't any hard... Uh, uh, kind of of action all, all your stuff uh, all your stu- all your stuff very was, light yeah. comedy yeah your stuff was frisky is that a good way to describe it no snuff okay. films. yeah <laughs> actually i uh my studio i rented my studio to alan shackleton who was the distributor who produced the last five minutes of snuff in my studio yeah Oh, God, I thought I Alex that said one. that there was never any. There was never really any snuff. There was film, never a snuff was a, film. There was no, never it was bullshit. It was total bullshit. Matter yeah. of fact, I was called in. I had been arrested uh, by uh, the uh, the Moral Squad, New York, at one point, and uh, later on, I was uh, approached by them to look at some so-called snuff films and give them because they they knew I had my degree in photography from RIT Mm -hmm. and they asked me to take a look at these films Mm -hmm. and the ones they showed me were so obviously phony yeah and uh, so they they never really found a a real snuff film I'm sure some were made uh, especially in the in the video era but they're made by murderers well, well no, no, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, but let, let's go back and look at this. What I was told was is that the the whole nature, the whole notion of snuff films was created as a way of discrediting the entire porn industry, and that in that, fact they didn't exist. Uh, Al Goldstein once put up a bounty and said, "I will give a hundred thousand dollars to anybody who can bring me a real snuff film." Yeah, nobody ever came and up. And nobody ever did. 99 Still to, to this day, nobody's ever really come up with one. Yes. But the whole point was that Alan bought a terrible, terrible film that uh, Roberta Finley and her husband had made in South America called Slaughter that was so bad it couldn't be released. Like a biker and film or something, right? It was a, a takeoff on the Manson family. Very bad takeoff. And, but it was so bad it couldn't be released. But when all this publicity came out about snuff, Alan rented my studio, brought in a director and a crew, and they shot a five-minute bit where the girl is supposedly killed on they camera. They chopped their fingers off. I saw they it. They chopped their fingers like off. With the they, pliers, they, right? ste- yeah, well, they, they cut off her hand with a little jigsaw, which I still have to this day. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But uh, the whole point was that he, he he put this five minutes on the end of the film and then released it saying, is it real? Of course, it was bullshit. But, it, but you know, it got so much publicity. The that day, it opened, well, a lot of people... the day it opened at, yeah. at one of the most prestigious uh, theaters in New York City, there were pickets outside. 
uh, <laughs> women picketing like crazy. Uh, I called Alan, and, and I said to him, how much did the pickets cost you? <laughs> and there, there was like dead silence for a minute, and he said, nothing. I, I, I didn't hire them. I was going to hire some, yeah. but they showed up. I don't know yeah. who they are. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, uh, Al, Al Goldstein, though, at the time, was very mad at Shackleton for having done that film because he said all you're, all you're doing is somehow giving some credibility to the existence of snuff films. And people uh -huh. are going to see this and go, oh, I saw the snuff film. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. We were, I, my, my girlfriend and I were in an Italian restaurant down in Little Italy one night. And there was uh, two couples sitting at a table uh, a little way away from me. And the guy is going on about how I saw it. I called the police. I wanted them to uh, investigate. That girl was definitely killed. There's no way. And I'm, I'm choking on my spaghetti. <laughs> And, and the fact not, was, not the, laugh in his face. the fact was that for whatever he did in that film, other people came along later, like Wes Craven, and did better. Oh, much better. Yeah. If you look at that film, for instance, when they cut off her hand, it was a, a, a phony arm attached at the wrist, and mm -hmm. and the and the guy had his hand over her wrist, and they they cut here, and uh, it was full of awful and and uh, uh, phony blood spurting out. Yeah. But in the mean in the meantime, uh, this guy's hand is still there. The hand is cut off, and it's still doing this, which yeah. a human hand won't do. Yeah. Well, what you I'm, what I'm off, the, the thing is that it's strange, but in that period of time, a guy who was working in the porn business was a guy by the name of Wes Craven. They yes. should have hired him to do it. No, <laughs> they know? hired the guy who the, the guy who the guy who actually directed it was named Simon Nocturne. Um, there are oh, many, many on. sites on the internet yeah. that cite me as the director. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had nothing to do with it except that I rented my studio to them and I, I performed the, the duties that a studio manager would have performed. You know, yeah. I made sure their lights were set and things, you know, they had all their equipment. You know, I did not direct. Right or have anything yeah. to do with the direction of the film. I do have a bunch of stills, though. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, the, it's, it, it was quite a story, that, that, whole, that whole thing. But uh, you said you chose to do comedy. And yeah, there was well, a, there, I, I think sex is fun. And I, I, my movies represented that. Well, you, you, you I, I can't, th did you ever do a serious one? I don't think you ever did a serious one, did you? Dami, you left that to Damiano. Say yeah. again, Damiano? I say, I, I, you, I, I can't remember you doing a serious film. We left that to Damiano. He was always trying yeah. to make the arty films, you know, Devil yeah. and Miss Jones. And, and, and Chuck Vincent. Chuck Vincent and I got into a, a big argument uh, one night at a, a screening um, because he thought that I was uh, uh, cheating the public because I was, I was doing, I, was, I wasn't taking sex seriously. And we were both drunk, and we had this evidently loud argument out in the uh, um, <laughs> the lobby of the theater, which people came back to us later. And I, I later called Chuck uh, to apologize, and he said, "I don't remember. I don't even." Well, remember I did something. The damn discussion. Uh, I did it was something. Part of the show. I did something, Mal, which I, to this day, feel sorry about having done. But somebody had to do it. Uh, and the uh, porno business, the Adult Film Association, has never called me to give me an award or anything for this. <laughs> but I was, if you may remember, the first person ever to produce hardcore porn on videotape. I decided this would be a cheap way of doing it. We did a thing called Midnight Blue Uncensored. And oh, was okay. the Spermathon uh, it, it, hardcore? That was part of it. That was part yeah. of it, yeah. Yeah, you gave and, me a copy of that. Yeah. I don't have it anymore. Yeah, but uh, I, I, that was, to my knowledge, the first time a, a, a film, basically a film, had been released being shot entirely on video because I told the distributor, which were the guys who owned the World Theater, what was the names? The, uh, uh, who remembers? It, oh, it 40 years ago. Uh, <laughs> that we could do it. We could do it for $300. 
which is basically just pay- we had all the equipment. I made videos. We, I was one of the first that also made videos. Yeah, yeah. but they weren't that cheap. Yeah, well, this was really cheap. Okay, and uh, uh, three hundred bucks, and they said you can't, and I said I will, and we delivered to them a finished product, and they went wow, and from then on. All of a sudden, people started doing shows, uh, videos. But to my knowledge, it was the first one ever produced on video. Well, uh, like with the Spermathon, those people worked for free, right? Well, that was covering a real event that actually happened. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. what was her name? The, the girl. Uh, the, oh, God. She did I like knew 100. Her yeah, I knew her. Tara her Alexander. Good friends. T- Tara Alexander. Yes, and, and and Susan was the M and not the MC, but the you know she had a microphone. She I saw one scene where she dove in yeah. and tried to get commentary. My ex-wife, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but it was uh, we did it at uh, Plato's retreat. Plato's, yeah, yeah. And, and and Tara and her husband and I went out to eat afterwards. <laughs> any, she was still hungry. Anybody we have any was, anybody <laughs> have any questions to ask? And that, uh, I I noticed that Brian happened? is kind of falling asleep. You know. <laughs> Um, Plato's Plato's was where uh, Bette Midler and uh, no, 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 it was called the Bat. Oh, no, that, no, was the that it what it that Plato's was it be, it was a sex club. The, no, that yeah. became Plato's. It was Swingers Club. It, it was it was the right. it was the uh, Ansonia Hotel Baths, wasn't it? That was the original Plato. Yes. Yeah, and, the, and then the when the Baths they, became Plato's, uh, yeah, and then they wow. moved from there down to Thirty what yeah. Fourth Street, and they were there yeah. in Thirty Fourth Street for years. Yeah. My my ex wife, Baby Doe, used to appear there on Monday nights yeah. um, because they let single guys in on Monday nights, so they had adult entertainment. Well, what, what, what they did is they would stripper. allow they would allow um, women in because it, 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 and they would all, well they would in allow the early days in when it went no when, when it was a when it was a male gay sex club at the Ansonia Hotel before it became oh, right. Plato's, mm-hmm. they would allow. Uh, women in on weekends so they could see Bette Midler, who used to be playing there. All right. Wow. Yeah. So uh, you know that's how you how you got to do it. Any questions, Brian? But, but about baby, this? But baby <laughs> used to appear there every Monday. Yeah. So we got in. We lived uh, on 29th Street. Yeah. Uh, so we used uh, Plato's as our health club. We'd yeah. go in and have steam and, and have the uh, buffet. And lock ourselves in a room and sleep. You know, mm-hmm. it was uh, because we got in free. Brian, any questions? We, qu- we also did a few other things. Brian, any questions about these houses? He's not days? interested because it's not gay porn. Well, well he's young. I worked, than everybody I worked here, on so. one of the most expensive gay porns ever made. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah called uh, Centurions of Rome. It was probably the worst gay film ever made. It was made on money stolen from the Brinks. Robbery. You mean the one out the uh, the one they did the God uh, God uh, Goodfellas Lufthansa, about? Lufthansa, right? Or... No, no, that was oh the, the Brinks, the Brinks, Brinks, the Brinks. No, no, this is Brinks in in uh, I think it was in uh, uh, Boston. Boston. Yeah, it was Boston Brinks, and one of the guys uh, who was uh, who got part of the money invested in this film called Centurions of Rome, and. Uh, it was the most expensive gay film ever made up till that date. Yeah. And it, it was terrible because there was so much blow on the set. <laughs> everybody was stoned. The guy must have bought pounds worth. And everybody was stoned out of their minds. Now, now did you nobody, s- could, nobody could get a hard on. I mean, this is supposed to be a hard on gay film. And none of the guys could get it up for a guy, another guy. Uh, when we edited it, when I, I wound up. Uh, as a, an, the ed, an editor on it, uh, I didn't have anything to do with the shooting of it. Yeah. But we used to call it the Centurions of Bayonne because <laughs> it was so bad. What? Uh, 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 there were some terrible. So, so in the uh, the Rialto Report also has a podcast on it. Yeah, yeah. I really recommend any of your uh, uh, watchers to to try and find the Rialto Report. Yeah, it's it's, it's on iTunes. Just the Rialto yeah. Report. It is really it. It's a very, Fantastic. it's a very studious, very well uh, uh, documented sure. uh, yes. piece of work. I mean, when they did the thing on me, you know, some people will do things about something I've done, and then I'll sit there and I don't even want to listen to it because I know it's just going to be wrong. Okay, 
And they did this thing on Midnight Blue, must have been uh, 45 minutes to an hour. And they used some of the stuff that I did on my life in the passing lane about Midnight Blue. Mm -hmm. And they were 100% accurate about it. There wasn't oh, yeah. anything that I had an argument with. Uh, oh, no, they're, they're very meticulous in yeah. their research. Yeah. I, like I say, my, I did like the third podcast for them. So I could I could never figure out with a, April, a, April and her husband, whose name I eludes yeah, me right I now. Oh, he's gonna kill me. Uh, uh, they when I met them, they are such clean cut people who have no ties to the porn industry, who became fascinated by this history that they started documenting. He's in the he's in the financial yes. uh, industry, yeah. uh, but he is he is. A what are your ages? I, I hate ages? to call him a fan. Because he's just a, he's a, a real actual historian. Well, I think he, what they like younger. what they like is the history of that period of time. Right. They, they don't really care about porn today. They don't care about you know stag films before that. They care about that one period of time. They're that, trying to document it. Like that the Deuce, in fact, covers and. Um, uh, it, that, it, it, yeah. It's really you, fascinating. These two absolutely clean cut. He's a, he, as I say, he is in the money business, and he's a, a very wealthy from it, I think. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and she's in it too, I think. And they're just the two people you would not think would suddenly decide that they were going to research this particular subject. Yes, uh, Phil. Uh, what I was. Uh what I was wondering was, you know, some of those photos you have that that uh, uh, woman left you who was taking photos around the time of Midnight Blue. And Ryan I Stein. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if uh, incorporating it into some of these things that uh, Rialto was doing would uh, give it some exposure. And, uh, and Well, and I, have a, I, have another, I have another possible use for it that way. Oh. Yeah. It has to do with my own life. And then, you know, because I, 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 in case Mal doesn't know, do you remember Ann Reinstein, blonde woman who used to work with me? Vaguely. Mal, yeah. She, I is, I, she, was always shoot, yeah. she was always shooting whenever I was shooting. And, and so I've got the, I, she died and she left me and another guy, her, all her photographs. Uh, to do with as we wanted, it would basically to try and promote her, her work, which never got promoted during her lifetime. And it's very good stuff. And I started looking at it, all the stuff from the Midnight Blue period, and it's like she documented me shooting other people. <laughs> so I figure maybe I have a use for it, you know, that I, that I, I, I may do a, a, a short documentary on the Midnight Blue period and I've got it all documented in these photographs, you know. Uh, That's a good idea. It's me on my back. It's me under somebody taking a picture. Uh, uh, it was all very, very odd and unusual positions to take those pictures and to take that video. But it's pretty neat that it's she got she got the other end of the camera. You That's know, great. Uh, I, I yeah. have like three pictures of me. For my entire career, yeah, except for the ones when I was an actor, yeah, which I really don't pass around much. So, what do you do these days, Mal? Just around on the computer, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it I, sp I spend a lot of time in chat sites, yeah, be you know, hitting on foreign women. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a lot of girlfriends. Unfortunately, they're all halfway across the world. Well, they I, well the, uh, the difference is they used to be imaginary, and now at least you have a photograph of them. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I got have it. a photograph, yeah. not necessarily of them. So uh, right. you know yeah. I, what I what I would do is bring this right up to what we normally do here. Uh, you know. Uh, are you bothered by the politics you see around you today, Mel? Oh my God, it, it, I'm I'm scared shitless. I'm I'm it, the fact that that the Trump got in was bad enough. Yeah, but now Trump is the standard. I mean, he is you know he lies every single day of his life. 
and they accept it. That's scary as hell. Well, by the way, the guy, I mean, the guy, the guy you're in the frame next to you uh, uh, on my computer uh, it, it is one of those people who gets suckered in by this asshole. Let me ask he you. Drank the Kool Aid. Let me ask you this: <laughs> Is he reminiscent of people you used to do business with? In other words, no. You, 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 uh, you wait a minute. My, compared to him. They were very ethical. They were practically saintly. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm talking about... You, You're you, talking about... You had to deal with those guys in order to oh, get your films Oh, of course your, I did. Your Everyone out. did. Yeah. Um, uh, they, that's that's does where he they bonded uh, their uh, money in those days. Does he remind you of a mobster? No. No? Uh, he's He hasn't got the balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, Daniels can attest to that. Uh, <laughs> Putin, Putin has him... By the short hairs, and is never going to let go. Um, yeah. Phil Phil's chomping at the bit to say something here. Not really. You know, I, I figure if you want me to comment, you'll ask me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes? Since when has that started you? <laughs> well, Since when you have know, you waited I, for I me to ask you? But I, yeah. I really believe that this Supreme Court debacle has is going to affect the midterm elections yeah overflow yeah. i mean there there are more women running than ever before in history i think the democrats are gonna sweep both the house and the senate i hope you're and, right and there. i really think they're gonna are you drinking this something guy. or is no, it drugs no, I'll tell no you. it's just it's just hopefully I'll tell you something. You hope. I'll tell you it, it, something. It's I'll, hope. That's I'll what tell it you is. something, Mal. Yeah. It's going it's to go. It's going to go one way or the other. Now I know that sounds like a simple <laughs> answer. That's, that's a good. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, it always does. But it's going to go big one way or the other. Either the Republicans are going to dominate again, big time, or the Democrats are going to dominate big time. I I don't think there's going to be a a, a middle ground where win some, lose some. Blah, blah, blah. You know, my Republican buddies are saying that we're probably going to keep the House by maybe two and uh, we're definitely going to maybe increase in the Senate. And uh, that, that that's what Republicans are saying. Well, you're hoping. Medi and the Democrats are saying the exact opposite. Exactly. So we'll, yeah. find, so we'll find, so find out in November. Alex's exactly. prediction we'll was spot on. on. So you know go something? I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. In the last couple of days, it's really bothered me. OK. Yeah. Uh, uh, is Trump brought up something, and it's something you said, you know, uh, innocent until proven guilty. You know, yeah. he said that about he said that about Putin, and he said that now about the uh, Saudis. You guys, In, yeah. innocent until proven guilty. It's amazing that he has come to that determination. Do you remember Mal when I Donald Trump? When, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, yeah, and and I would agree with you, innocent until proven guilty. However, Donald Trump didn't live by that when he was vilifying the Central Park Five. Mm -hmm. When he took out full-page ads saying, bring back the death penalty for these guys. And they weren't even tried yet. I agree, yeah. So what, that's, what, that's, what, what hypocrisy. That's, that's, that's what hypocrisy. He, he was, was a Democrat. Turn then, around tomorrow. You're talking about the Stone Age. Yeah. What was yesterday? He yesterday. Wasn't he a Democrat in those years. Yesterday, he talked about Khashoggi, and said, "Oh no, the, you know, the the, the the Crown Prince is definitely not to blame." And where that strong throne was a you know, rogue know. element. But then he brought up. He brought up. He brought up. He brought up innocent until proven guilty. Remember, that's what we live by. No, that's not what you live by, Donald. With the Central Park Five. You remember it, don't you? Uh, um, um, I remember it. Yeah, you remember it. You remember don't it, don't you, Jeff? And how he took out a full-page ad, I think it was in the Times, saying bring back the death penalty so we can get these guys executed. <laughs> and they that, weren't I, even I like the and, idea. and they weren't even on trial yet, Phil. Right, and then you later know, on, they were acquitted years but he later. He was citizen Trump at that time, and, and most likely a Democrat. No, no, so, no, but, 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 no, but this whole concept that we should believe in innocent until proven guilty, I mean, he, he went completely against that. Well, you know, people are allowed to change. As, uh, but what I do like is on the Saudi thing, he's not rushing to judgment. What he's doing is saying, hey, look, do the investigation, 
uh, and uh, you know we do oh, have a lot to Phil, lose. Phil, oh please, financially. Phil, th- what what do you think? Uh, maybe maybe Kasogi no, is out there in in in, uh, in uh, floating on a boat in Capri. Well, no, he's now kibbles and bits. You know, come on, he had a watch that broadcast his death. How much uh, more now, proof now, do you if you need? believe that, I, yes, I, I, I got do. a bridge oh, no. in Brooklyn, and I'll tell you why. It's uh, funny that it happened. Yeah, well, what happens is uh, Alex has a Apple Watch. Yes, that's right, right? and I can take and it. He, uh, has the, he has the new one with the cellular, but uh, in Turkey, from what I understand, they don't have the cellular system set up. They don't have uh, the this LTE. Has no, this, has, this has nothing to do with cellular. This has to do and, with Bluetooth. You, uh, can, you also, can broadcast the, it to your... His wife or his potential wife was sitting out in the car with his cell phone. He didn't have his cell phone, so if he had the version of of watch Phil, 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 you, you could do it you could do it you can do phone. it without uh having to go through the cell system you can do it by bluetooth if you're within right. range and if you're within range and have the, your phone record what you're hearing on your watch that's what they well, said i can do that i can, but when so, i first heard that phil i tested right. it with my watch and it worked well okay so where the Turkish the Turks say that they have this recording, let them let them. They say they have video. They say they have produced the recording. They have video too, supposedly. No. So you watch those sure. video? I think I think no, they I said haven't. the Tur- Turks they, have said they have video too. Well, they got video no, of the guy going sure. into the no, embassy, they said, but they have no video of the guy. They, uh, supposedly, exiting. they have video of him being tortured. Yeah. Oh, they have video of him being yeah. tortured. That's what they claim. Oh, no. Now you, you know I will agree with it. look Phil come on just just between us like these guys aren't around here now okay <laughs> just you and me you and me we won't listen what are the yeah. chances the crown prince ordered this well, pretty good okay thank you very much <laughs> well, okay I, I, I tell you why uh, this this Khashoggi guy was uh, associated with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, number one. Number two, they, there are what? there are people. Hold it, listen to me. There are people trying to get rid of uh, this uh, crown prince, and the reason why is that they don't like the fact that he is pushing out Sharia law. They don't like the fact that he's allowing women to drive. They don't like the fact that he's westernizing Saudi Arabia. And so you That's have all like uh, you have all of these. Uh, uh, they also don't like the fact that he threw all these other guys into into a. a uh, Hotel and hotel. tortured them till some of because, them died. Plus, they and, were all corrupt. So yeah, right. Now, so what's he, happening? He's not. He clean. Uh, no, he, he wanted. He too. wanted what they, they but, had. But, he he wanted he what they had, the Phil. He wanted what they had. Now nah, exactly. he was given what they had. No, he his he, father he, or his what uncle. They had. Uh, you know, first he, of all, first of all, it's the first time I've ever heard anything about Kasoji being in the Muslim Brotherhood. Where did you get that one? Uh, Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ashley. Ashley. The bloated April, temple. Huh? April and Ash. Oh. Ashley is this is the name. A- Ashley. Um, the re- Ashley. The re- April and Ashley. The, uh, Rialto report. This is how uh, right. this. A- is- April and Ashley this is, West. This is how old people remember things. It just sits there for a while <laughs> it and it ruminates out, yeah. and then, pfft, yeah. It had to start way back here. So, uh, Alex, you and make it all the way to here. Yeah. You would agree that Rush Limbaugh probably vets his sources a little bit and he's 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 a good broadcaster. Oh, he, oh right? and I don't believe he vets his sources, no. Well, I, I believe he, I believe he's a good broadcaster. Or he used to All be. Right. He's not as good as he used to be. Well, he's deaf. But I'm yeah. talking about one, you know, like I, I, I could be a violinist and I could watch another violinist and he might be a Nazi, but I'd have to admit he was a good violinist. Okay. Yeah, maybe a good Nazi. All right. But, <laughs> so I'm so, one broadcaster anyway. saying that Rush Limbaugh is a good broadcaster, as a broadcaster goes, but you, he's... Okay. He, you would agree that uh, the crown prince is doing things in Saudi Arabia that go against the grain of the hardliners. Well, in, in yes, but he's doing he's Israel. doing a lot of stuff that's very very terrible too. He's been killing no, no, pop, no, no, no. whole you know, populations of people. What aboutism? Okay. No, it isn't what aboutism. This is yeah, the truth. So, he yes, I'm not he, saying this so he gave a women guy. the he gave women the ability to drive, but on the other hand, he goes to war against countries and kills women and children. 
Okay, so, well, oh, well, I guess, but he lets women drive. Yeah, well, you know, you know it's the devil uh, that is, is is the worst one. He's he's against Iran. Uh, he's, he's and, pro of course, he had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. So we, we, oh, oh, I'm sure. But you know what aside. the problem is, is that he's pushing out the Wahhabis. He is not sanctioning oh, them wow. the way they've been sanctioned for 40 years in Saudi Arabia. And it's the Wahhabi sect that is doing the terrorism and and the hate and the things. So what's happening is is he's pushing against did you, these guys. Did you, you previously tell me that back. he that he was a Wahhabi? Uh, no, no, he's he's not. I don't know if he's a Wahhabi, but he's. Oh well, you don't away. know if he's a Wahhabi. Is he a Wahhabi? I don't know. But well, then well, then why are you Wahhabis accusing him like of trying him. to push out the Wahhabis? Why would he be pushing out the Wahhabi? Everybody's got to have a Wahhabi. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, hey, my uh, photographer. I had to oh, do that. God. I had to do that, folks. It's the law. I had to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bada boom. So uh, anyway, I can see that there's a yeah, possibility yeah. that yeah. these people want to discredit the crown prince. And they have done a good job of neutralizing this guy in the eyes of the uh, U.S. government as well as the rest of the world. So by killing uh, Khashoggi... Uh, they have uh, essentially uh, uh, sterilized or silenced uh, the crown prince. So, um, you know, maybe that, that's Phil, what's going on. Phil, why don't you just go on the assumption he probably had this guy killed? It, it, they it, you they know. killed Kishobi to, to quiet the crown prince? That is yeah. the most bizarre around-the-corner well, Kishobi, Kishobi, <laughs> wait a minute, Kishobi was anti- uh, 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 this crown prince, and he he was pro Muslim Brotherhood, and they didn't want this guy. Did you really? Because you do know that Kasoji was one of the, uh, I believe, one of the uh, one of the royalty in Saudi Arabia. They're all royalty in no, Saudi no, Arabia. No, no, but he he was in particular. Yeah, and that yeah. he just left the country when he found out he couldn't say what he wanted to say. Right. right. Yeah. He came Porter for an American newspaper. Well, the, I, you know, I had a friend that was one of the three thousand princes uh, back in the early seventies. He, he uh, uh, Faisal Al Saud, but he wasn't the main Faisal Al Saud, and he had slaves. He was the other and, Faisal Al Saud. Oh, there's three thousand of them. Yeah, and you know, it's so Smith. I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like Smith. You know, if you, everybody's related to the, you know, to, well, to one it, of the uncles. Well, to begin with, the the, the uh, Durst brought this up the other day. Uh, in that case, in the case of Saudi Arabia, it's the only country named after a family that owns it. It's a family affair. The family of Saud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the house of Saud. Uh, now they've been around since what? 1927. Oh, long. I think I think longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Not much longer. Not much longer. Yeah. Right. And maybe after World War One, but Yeah, and then you look what at countries like that? Jordan. And they uh, twenty seven, I think. Yeah. Nineteen twenty seven, I think I heard. Yeah. Nineteen twenty seven yeah. they named so, that. So, you know, it was nineteen forty eight that they made Israel a state and, and they're and they were all beefing. What what do these guys have claim to Saudi Arabia and these other you know, Jordan has claimed, you know, the king, whatever his name is, has well, everybody to, has a claim somewhere. Right. In the Middle East. Yeah. Hey, Trump has a claim to this Everybody country. Everybody has a claim to their neighbor's property. None exactly. of them care about what they live on. Right. And the Kuwaitis. I mean, all of these Everybody. guys, it doesn't matter. They, what they've been around, they've been around since, since in and out Burger. And you everybody know, it, hates the Jews. Right. In and out Burger is newer than Saudi Arabia, uh, is older than Saudi Arabia. So, you know. Uh, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. They, no, it isn't, Phil. So. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I just I just look at this thing. Is, is there a chance that there was some Machiavellian plot? Maybe. Well, maybe. Hand, maybe. Come on, yeah. Phil. Maybe is is for babies. Maybe is uh, is is I, really minimizing this. It. it I want to change the subject. Yeah, okay. I want to put in a free plug for a restaurant. <laughs> there okay. is a sub shop called Jersey Mike's. Yeah, oh, I've been I have just tonight. discovered. My son ordered tonight. <laughs> some of the best sandwiches I have ever had in my life. I mean, I it, it's they just opened one here up close to me. In the Poconos? Yeah, in the Poconos. Better than the Carnegie Deli? Well, it's not there anymore. Not only better, cheaper. <laughs> Do you know there <laughs> used to be? No, they're they're very the stage. I can't remember. I can't remember the stuff, number, but they but used to be they're full of meat. Yeah. They they cut them 
they cut the meat right then and there, fresh. They're they're in they're in they have an incredible selection. I'm I'm addicted to their roast beef and cheese uh, uh, sub. Hey, and, Carter, no nobody beats Mike's meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, um, I, you know, there used to be, I, I, I don't know if I've got it right, but there used to be in New York City close to 3,000 delis. Do you know how many there are left? <laughs> they have one or three. There's about three or four, and that's it. Yeah, I believe yeah. it. Here in Manhattan, we don't have the Carnegie anymore. We don't have the stage. Uh, we right. still have uh, Katz's. You know, what, Second Avenue moved. And Shea Bar's in the market, right? And yep, you got yeah. the one on on um, Second uh, Avenue Cut. Deli, the Second Avenue Deli, which is hey, not on no, Second that's Avenue. Second anymore. Avenue Deli, I can't think. Of, it's a tourist trap. Um, Cats. They're they're, line, they're Cat. lined up. Rent. No, it's down on uh, Canal Street. Canal Street? Canal. No, I think you're thinking of Katz's because I lived right next to Katz's and it was on Houston. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. I've been in it's so long. Yeah. I mean right down the street from your uh, right seventeen dollar uh, uh yeah, 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 that's it. Taxes. That's it. Now, okay. That's the place. That's where I gotta admit it's almost worth it. That's where uh, uh, my son uh, brought uh, me back from New York. That, 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 that's where uh, that's uh, the scene uh, in uh, when Harry met Sally was filmed yes. where she yes. says, I'll okay. have what she's having. I yeah. don't know why I remember it as canal. You're right. Yeah, you know, there's oh, some good delis. Yeah, there's some good delis around the country in Studio City. There's Arts Deli. Uh, you, you probably got more delis one. in San Francisco than you we got, got in New we York got City. We got a Vinny D's uh, up here in the Poconos. It's yeah. actually uh, see New on, York's on this show, folks. Company. It either comes back to one, two, one of two one things: deli. either food e either medicine <laughs> or 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 food. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know what yeah. I had yeah. last Wolfies? night? I went to Italy. It was one of my little pleasures every now and then. Go off my diet for one night, ravioli. At Italy, the, the, at first the little uh, tag, uh, the little uh, agnolo, uh, what agnolotti I think it's called, and the, the tiny uh, raviolis, and then I get the uh, prosciutto raviolis, and then we came home and we pigged out. And, it's, and, my, and it's my favorite, you. my favorite dish in the entire world, yeah, is in Holland, in the Netherlands. Yeah, they have. For lunch, they have little stands on the street, and they serve what they call new herring, and it's literally fresh raw herring that was caught that morning on a on a slab of bread and raw onion, and you see all these bankers in their three piece suits lined up on the street for these little herring stands, and they're bigger than McDonald's. Did the herring have herring bones? No. Are there no. bones and herring? No, no, they're boneless. They're they're yeah. they're they're herring. You can eat the bones. They're flayed. They're I don't think I don't think I can eat a herring. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, you 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 Incredible. you can eat herring in cream sauce, Phil. No, no. Oh my God, oh, my Phil. God. Phil Jeff, Jeff, either. tell him what he's missing, Jeff. The, uh, I'll, I'll tell him what he's uh, missing. Turn on your mic, Jeff. What? Tell him what he's missing. You gotta have. For breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you start. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Wow. I have a jar of that in my refrigerator seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, one jar will only last me one sitting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's good because stuff. Because I'm a pig. <laughs> it's good stuff. You oh, someone Sausalito. told me to have that for New Year's for good luck or something. It was disgusting. In Sausalito, <laughs> they they fish for herring there. Uh, there's there's a herring season. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, right right off the right really? in the bay. Really? Yeah, yeah. Herring is a, a big uh, a big fishing oh, it's item there. Very big in the Netherlands. Mm, yeah. Also, pauling, which is uh, uh, smoked eel, they sell in uh, the um, uh, bars. They're like uh, slim jims. I've had I've had a nagi. They come with, through with these long sticks of yeah. smoked eel, and they sell them. And you sit there drinking and eating these eels. And wow. it's, it sounds like a I know it sounds so. Dis, it sounds so. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Carter, hey, you've had some heart problems, haven't you? <laughs> yes. Heart issues. Is this is that it could have something to do with the herring? 
No. Oh, Come okay. on, that's fish. probably that's good for you. Great. Yeah. By the way, to I'll show you our panel, threes. folks, three people here have had heart problems on the panel tonight. So. It had. <laughs> had. You know how many pills I'm on to convince my body that I didn't die? <laughs> <laughs> I eat more pills for breakfast than I do food. Yeah. Hey, they stuck garden hoses in my arteries. You know, <laughs> I uh, I died on the table on my uh, my three hour uh, uh by triple bypass. Yeah, wound yeah. up being ten and a half hours on the table. Wow. They liked you. Wow. And and and, and, and Jeff, <laughs> what have you? I didn't know about it till two days later. Jeff, what have you got? You've got you've got uh, a pacemaker, right? No, I don't have No, 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 no. He has a pacemaker. Jeff oh. has a pacemaker. You gotta have he's a, got a pacemaker. He's got artificial valves. He's got... Uh, he's got a pacemaker that sends a signal to his phone that calls his doctor. Huh? No, I makes, do it, it all natural. natural. You do it all natural. <laughs> all right. My, actually, my pumping action mm -hmm. is 45%, which is the very low end of normal. Even though I've had so much heart problems... My heart just keeps. And you know what? Out. I can't figure. Out. I got this. I got this Apple Watch, right? And I go to the gym and I start pedaling away. And I'm pedaling for about 25 minutes. And I look at it, and my BPM is like only like 99 or something like that. And I'm thinking my heart should be going like a bunny rabbit. If What's it, it start it, out it, at? Huh? What's well, your resting? you got. Then you're. My resting is somewhere in the 70s. And yeah. you're uh, then you're exercising often enough. I Turn guess. Up the tension. I guess. I don't know. Maybe I better try for an hour on that bike. Thanks. I exercised. I think it was about a year ago Thursday. Oh well. I uh, no. I uh, uh, I do. Uh, hey, listen. I do a hundred sit-ups every morning. It takes me that many tries. To get out of bed. It, it takes me that many times to try and get. Why did you ruin my joke? Hey, it was too Why easy. Why did you jump in and ruin the it. joke, Mister uh, well, Hero? All right. No, actually, I was very lucky. I, I had a, I had a, after an automobile accident, and I had physical therapy. Yeah. And the guy, my physical therapist, I complained to him the fact that I was having a lot of trouble getting into bed and out of bed, and he taught me to uh, uh, roll into bed, to sit, roll on my side, yeah. and then roll back, and same way to get out of bed, roll on my side, and then come up. Yeah, and removed a lot of the pain, a lot of the trouble getting in and out yeah. of bed. You know something, folks. You know you're getting old when you got to be taught to how to get in and out yeah. of bed. You know? Exactly. Uh, hey, but I'm still here. <laughs> he's still here. He's still here. still here. And a lot of great stories to tell. Have you ever thought of putting this into a book, Mal? Unfortunately, uh, because of that episode with my uh, bypass, I have black holes in my memory. Really? Uh, I wrote about three quarters of an autobiography and realized that there are just portions, years, that are totally black. Well, I, 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 I've I, talked to people who uh, yeah. I know work for me. I mean, I, I know their bona fides. I know their, their, their name from, from yeah. my films. I have no memory of ever meeting them. Really? I have no, no memory of ever working uh, my, for me. My, I, I did my life story as a, as a uh, narrating it and talking about it. And I found that I had to call people and ask them some questions about when certain events took place because I couldn't remember them. And yeah, I, it, I, yeah, I just have a, I mean, literally black holes. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I can't remember. They're just not there. You're an old you fart. Know? That's why. You're an old fart. Look who's yeah, calling an old fart an old fart. fart. Now it's anyway. getting worse. Hey, listen, we got to go. There's the theme playing under us. Mal, always great talking to you. I call yeah. him Mal. Isn't it? Carter Stevens, That's ladies and gentlemen, Mal, a legend. Mal do. That's my real name. I don't keep it a, a secret. Oh, you never did. Just, you no. never did. That's no, what I always liked about you. You never had a nom de porn. You were just, your your yeah, mouth. Yeah, my last wife called me Carter. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, I, I, after all these years, I do answer to it. Uh, by the way, that's uh, that's Phil there. Thank you so much, Phil, for having joined us tonight, as well as Char Charlene Martinez. Brian, nice having you on. And Jeff, nice having you two on. Didn't get to say much, but... Uh, uh, you know, I think we heard some interesting stories out of uh, out of uh, Carter. Good night, all. Thank you all. 
for joining good me. Night. I give everybody, Great. everybody, Great. give them a big wave goodbye, would you, so they can see you go away. There they are. Okay. That's it for tonight, folks. That's our uh, citizen panel. That's the way it. Uh, that's the way the rumble goes. And uh, uh, if you stay tuned, you're going to get the intersection with uh, uh, with. Uh, er <laughs> oh God, I call him by the name I know him best as uh, by Jack Bishop, and the intersection. And then at uh, one o'clock this morning, it's connections uh, coming to us out of Florida. That's at one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night. Uh, at uh, 9.30 or so, I'm told. Uh, Damien will be here with the exchange, and then tomorrow night at 10. I'll be back here again. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>